stairs. That was tea. That was actually. karaoke tea, actually. That was tea. Yeah, that was that was a, a mm. teapot. I'm not sure if you saw that. Teapot party time. DZ banned Nook and Azami on the previous map. As for Koi, it was Dokubi and Mira. Nook banned out again by DZ right off the hop. Yeah, you have no choice. Crying on Nook is too good. You just gotta ban it every single time. I mean, you talked about this in particular, but other casters have as well about how Crying could very much be in the conversation for best Nook yep. overall in the world at the moment. Most respected for how many operator bans are targeted specifically toward him. I think that's for certain. Card banning out the Mira and the Dokubi, Dark Zero, Canadian. Identical bands, by the way. Exactly. Identical bands, again, because we're respecting the players and their playstyle choices on these maps. And then, Ooh, a different one. That's a change. Bandit is an operator that gets banned very rarely, but on Skyscraper, that is where this tends to happen the most. And it's because of the nature of how those external walls work on all the bomb sides. On the karaoke side, you got that uh, Geisha single wall leading to outside the building. And the off Office bomb side, you have the double wall leading to the balcony and the single wall leading to the balcony on the opposite side of the bomb side. With Bandit being banned out, no tricks will happen. Sure, you can set up a jammer there or a kite claw, but a single EMP will deal with that just fine and it frees up. You know, you don't have to go downstairs, deal with the bandit, and you buy more time on the clock, you can save your grenades. What if I told you that bandit was the sixth most banned defender? I would be very surprised to hear well, that. That's true. Valkyrie is the highest ban rate of all the defenders, followed by Azami, then Solus, then Kaid, then Mira, then Bandit. That is mm -hmm. definitely a To be fair. Valkyrie's ban rate is 53% of all maps. Bandit's ban rate is 6%. It's quite a drop off. <laughs> okay, that is a drop off. Even Valkyrie down to Azami in second place is 53 to 38%. So one in three maps you will see an Azami ban. Mm. And it's only been banned 6% of the time. It is very top heavy. But still, it's not that rare. And I feel like we've seen you and I at least two other Bandit bans yeah. so far this event. No, that we have. And again, one of those was on Skyscraper, so that pattern tends to follow just right. Early start here for both teams. It's going to be another slow approach. I say another one. The first slow approach so far, of course, you got to go through the motions of roam clearing and respecting your opponents. Koi, going to roam clear from the east over towards the west, open up this office double wall and start making the entry. DC already fallen off this area of the map. They got their stronghold on drum and top dragon, and that's where the first pain point is going to be for Koi to break apart. Reason why you see bandit bans on some of these maps versus others would be the amount of ways that a bandit can sit totally sheltered yeah. and successfully trick, right? There are certain walls and there are certain floors under those walls where you can't really do that much. If a bandit's there, you're kind of doomed. Just as we saw Kanto be a bit doomed. Hops into Terrace, contests against Gavin on draw. Oh. Deepak gets it back. It's a cheeky angle on the rappel. But still, there was a small advantage. I'm going to put that one down as a trade. Yeah, good point. Once again, no one gains much from this. It's back and forth. It's been 10 seconds, give or take. No clear advantage. Pampus still has a shield position top dragon, but Drum has now been surrendered by Dark Zero as Asami was needed to hold that position aggressively. So Koi trading that one for one in a great way. Oh, and a run out from Canadian. Nets a kill on the D-Pack. That was the repel that you saw. Call it a cheeky angle. Hard to contend against somebody who hops out of that kitchen window. Toxic Canister goes out. Skies has used all of them with a minute to go. Look at this angle, by the way. Who boy. Skies is totally concealed behind that Kiba barrier. Yeah, let's get the shotgun. Injury engaged with the crossfire as well. He can sit nice and tight here with no toxic babes with the walking gun. Leon Gids walks in, takes oh. an NJR. Skies follows to Spoit. Dozen kills for Spoit so far in this contest. Rather, 20 kills for Spoit so far in this contest. Approaching two dozen. DZ trail. And now it's Panbazoo taking a bunch of damage. And being finished off by none other than Spoit. Do you believe in Spoit's superiority? Because I'm starting to, Nick. Canadian far back at back stairs. No real information, but that P90 has a lot of bullets in the mag. Quick reload, diffuser going down, Leon Gid's successful. But it's Spoit, three kills. Business as usual. It's too easy. It's too easy. 
I mean, let's just see if the replay shows it. Sport literally just walks in. Ah, oh, it doesn't show it, I don't think. But yeah, Sky's there with the shotgun, SMG 11 in hand, raiding ready. And Sport just walks in and it looks so easy. And it's just like that late half, the last six rounds or so of Theme Park where Sport walks in somewhere against all the odds and he just comes to my wins out. One, two, three kills back to back. And I mean, when Card, they're operating like this. That's when they are at their strongest, when they can just find openings effortlessly. Normally, it's Crying and Spot working together on one side of the map, while you have Leon Gates, Deepak, and Kento working the opposite side. So they have these two squads working at the same time. They did it last round. One squad, they roam cleared west over. The other one, they open up that Geisha wall. So it's Stats of Thermite doing one job, and the Injury's doing the other. And it means that Carly buys so much time on the clock because they're so effective. If you've heard their voice comes on YouTube on their channel, that Leon gets also uploads on Twitter sometimes, you will hear that they have this way of communicating at the same time because no one's yelling. It's very quiet. They will say, hey, Kenzo, go over here, do this. And then Kryon will go, hey, Spot, get ready. And they've just been working on that for the last six or so months, if not longer and really perfected that craft. On a map like Skyscraper, that's where it really starts showing. <laughs> Almost reinforced point, but nice try. Did it last round, open up that soft part. DC made an adaptation to reinforce it now to now hold on to the roam game for longer. And this is a slightly different bomb site. They've gone downstairs in barbecue kitchen in barbecue kitchen instead. But it plays out similarly. Gaze of all matters, that's reinforced. The extended roam on the west side or the east side, sorry, also matters. Kyle gonna pop up in the first wall. Gavin again finds an opening kill onto Sport this time. So star player shot down. Sport's on 22 kills so far with that opening 3k. Silence the best player on Koi and the likelihood of you winning the round goes up. But once you get to this level, there's a lot of weapons on both of these teams. Again, a look of confusion and surprise <laughs> on Kryan's face as he finds one player from DZ on back stairs. So animated. That clip of him fighting the microphone the arm on his mic <laughs> is an all-timer. <laughs> oh, that's that's one of the best clips to come out of this scene in a long time. Down goes Canadian. The Solus that was roaming is no more. Kanto Ricchetti finds him off-site. Both of these bomb sites on the west side of the map, starting on T-Karaoke and then almost directly beneath it. It's the barbecue kitchen bomb site for, for round number two. DC sitting tight, got that info above. C4 prepped and ready. All Skies needs is the call of when, and then it's gonna pop! Oh, it looked like he hit it with his hammer, triggering <laughs> the mine. Kanto Ricchetti going for the swing, and... Oh, it's an explosive end. When, hey, what if every, like, thousand, one in, like, no, ten thousand, no. Sledge swings his hammer, he just blows up? <laughs> How fun would that be? Would be so How fun unfair. would that be if that was in the game? Oh, uh, tremendously fun for defenders, not so fun if you're Kanto Rocket Ricchetti. hammer! But a great sight for the spectators and the fans of the game, of course. Sure what it looked like, of course. DZ with the advantage. They've also taken out one of those exothermic charges that were put on the soft hatch upstairs inside of Geisha. So it's not just kills that DZ's coming out ahead on, it's also taking out the gadgetry of Koi. Yeah, good puzzle solving so far. I mean, again, DZ's discipline, hiding in corners, has the crossfire. Koi just gotta break it by brute forcing on in these windows and doorways and just win their gunfights. Issue is, they're down a man, but they're gonna try their best. Oh, barging into the bomb site. Leon Gids falters, crying the only pick in that engagement, and he gets pokeballed by Gavin. With a call we were watching, with a call we need held. Help. That's all we gotta do. You'd think they'd be happy with the round win, but still <laughs> time for Canadian to give some guidance to the rest of his team. Listening to Bonk, Darkseer's voice comes. It very much seems like when they're playing the game, they're locked in and everything's kind of not emotionless, but they're definitely trying to not that their feelings affect them in the server, which is something that a lot of top competitive to teams do in regular sports as well, because especially when you find yourself in overtime, max OT, that 15th round, you can get scared easily and not make the same play, take the same risk. And I spoke to Troy in the elevator, I think yesterday, this morning, and I was like, what's up with the face paint? I was like, is that like, are you gonna get into the zone? Like when you put on your jersey and your game shoes? And he's like, yeah, kind of. It's like, he started doing it because he liked it, he thought it was fun. And then one day the entire team was just like, 
They also want to do it. And now it's almost like a team ritual where like, it's game time. We put on our wall paint, we put on our jerseys, and we're going to win these games as put in 110%. Troy comes from hockey. He used to play at a very high level. He's talked yeah. about this in a number of biographies and documentaries, or rather not biographies, but documentaries that he's done, and how he was forced out of it due to concussions. But hockey has to be one of the most superstitious of all sports. Whether it be players doing the exact same thing before every single game, or simply thinking that they have lucky equipment. The best hockey player in the world right now is a gentleman named Connor McDavid, and he's got a pair of socks that just <laughs> have been completely destroyed at this point. They're not even socks. You can see his toes for free, and he still wears them before every single game because he considers them to be good luck. So if Canadian thinks there's some good luck with that face paint, that war paint, let him have his stitions, even if they are a little super. Now, DZ and Koi both losing some players very quickly on. They trade back. Panbazoo dies, and Cryon goes with him. Mutually assured destruction. And with just over two minutes to go, these teams will now reset. Damning for DZ as Wamai continues to generate those magnet discs. As time goes on, won't be able to do that now that he's in the grave. So there will probably be two discs, maybe a third at most, set up before they lost that defender. And this seems to be the name of the game for these two teams because only a handful of kills that aren't uncontested. Sport, he builds the benches for Koi. But again, the opening kill always traded back Bomb immediately. The second one, however, normally quiet afterwards. Gavin, very far away from his team. No trade anywhere near him to be had. DC with the wall to the exterior balcony opened up. That might be an issue later on because Koi could rotate to that balcony, not have to deal with any hot destruction, and still have angle and pressure into the bomb site. Proximity alarm gives the position away of one member from Koi. Could it be Spoit? Inside a drum? Meepy instructed them that DZ would be on the ground more often than not, and they <laughs> still seem to be. We saw the silhouette of one DZ player that was prone, not far away over by yep. Dragon. There it is, NJR, watching those footholds. The flash goes out, knows that he's being contested from this angle. He has ways to get back to the bomb site. Thank goodness for him and the rest of DZ. Oh, yeah. Terrace getting opened up by those Selmas, and slowly but surely, Koi chipping away at this defense. NJR doing what he does best, which is engage the enemy. Oh. Nice shot on the D-Pack, and the tracers whiz over his head as he's prone on the ground. Leon Gids, a pick on the skies. Both teams trading down, but it'll favor Koi. Oh. A look at Kanto and Spoit's HP so low, NJR gets three kills, and how about a 4K for NJR? And Jar finds himself in these rounds time and time again, finding these important moments. It looked like he was done for. Wall Grease behind him, two members of Koi storming his front. He runs away, gets flashbang, just barely gets out. And then he gets four kills right after, making it look easy. And yeah, he might be prone for half the round, but when he has to move, he does it. Right here, the wall bang attempt from Sport punished. Zinjiar knew his exact position due to those tracers he's giving it away. By DC building rounds. A slow lead. This is Skyscraper defense. Koi, they are very happy to stop the attack inside. But defending on Skyscraper, defending on any team, to be honest, is always going to be a little bit easier. Your job as a defender is to make it difficult to attack against you. Set up problems they need to solve. Right now, DC, they're doing their best. The shields, the frost mats, the key barriers, all problems that. Koi has to solve going through these rounds time and time again. When that side sword comes, you know, it gets flipped. Then DC become the problem solvers and Koi becomes the problem creators. Now, these were stats from, if I remember correctly, the start of the day. I don't know if they still hold true at this exact moment. And I know that we watched an Oregon match earlier. But Skyscraper is tied for second least played map with Oregon. Only Villa has been played fewer times. And would you believe it, but both Oregon and Skyscraper are basically identical in their win rates. Those are the two most defender-sided maps at this point. Skyscraper, of the 115 rounds, has 60% of those being won by the defense to 40% from the attackers. T in Karaoke is the most lopsided bomb site at the present moment at 73% of all rounds That's big. being won by the defenders. Koi's already won that bomb site. That is massive in terms of statistics. Next up is Master and Bathroom downstairs, but it's only been played five times. So 
what all can you gain from it? The next most played bomb site is Office and Exhibition, which has almost played the same amount as T. And it's 56 44 favoring mm. the defense. And that was the bomb site that DZ just won. Now, see something a little bit different. Gavin falters as once again DZ look to defend the most defender sided bomb site. And they've started off on the wrong foot. Again, Gavin completely isolated, no one nearby. And to make things worse, he's playing, you know, a regenerating gadget of Asami. So those Kiba barriers not gonna get full value in this round. One minute 30 bird in the clock. Koi, they have not had an issue with time so far. They start ramping up in that mid stage, and that is gonna be in about a few seconds. As Tracer's going through that wall. DZ searching for a single kill to even things out. Panbazu tries to find it. Leon Gid says no. Now it's Skies softened up. Smoke needs to survive. Still one toxic canister left. Skies has been using these canisters very early on, and maybe for good reason, because he's not able to use the last one thanks to Kanto Ricchetti. Spoit and the rest of Koi leading the charge. Kanto's caught up to him, but there's still five players from Koi searching for these final two kills. DZ forced out of the bomb site right now. They've completely seeded that part of the map and will either need to play below or for a retake, given how lopsided this round is for Koi. Kanin's gonna leave Injera alone on site, just stalling for time. If the time gets low enough, Kanin can stop the defuse. That could be a win condition for Dark here in a five versus two. Hold on a second, NJR's actually in the bomb site. He's prone. He's prone again. Meepy was right once again. Oh, this boy doesn't see him. He overlooks him, but he peeks over. NJR falls, Canadian, a brisk pace to get back to the bomb site. He thought backstairs was the play. I don't know if he had some intel, but might be able to get something from this angle or potentially scare Kanto off. No, Diffuser goes down. Diffuser almost goes down, crying gets the final kill. And that's a flawless round, is it, for Koi? Nice, nice entry. It's gotta fucking happen. What does, Troy? Yeah, what's gotta happen? We go from Leon being very happy, like, oh, let's go, good entry. It's gotta bleep happen. It does gotta happen. I mean, something has got to happen with these defensive rounds because you just spoke about it. The most defender side at bottom side not going in favor of DC, not just the first time, but they failed the second attempt as well. Barbecue, DC were successful last time they tried their hands at the bottom side. And I do think it adds more movement for the defenders. You can play upstairs, you can go and roam on the east side as well, just like DC did the previous time. Koi, they had to make more work of bigger areas of the map. I think it also bar just borrows down those opening kills. When, when Koi can get an uncontested opening, that's really poor for DC. The round conversion, it's there for Koi. Gavin, now two rounds in a row, just keeps dying early in the round with no trade. Whereas in theme park, it was always contested openings from both teams. Always a trade happening. Not the case this time. Spoit's leading fifth kill. He's been the star of the show so far. 19 kills in the very first map. And now five more to add to it. He's looking to catch up to those kill leaders ahead of him. I mean, if DZ wins this map, they're doing him a major favor because Koi's played so few <laughs> maps so far. Yeah. DZ has almost played two more full best of threes than Koi. That's that crazy to think about. Really insane when you think about it. Of course, Dark Zero played earlier. This is Koi's first and only, I believe, best of three today. That means it's a pretty relaxing one for them, possibly. Pambasu finds Spoit. That's the opening Dark Zero needed, uncontested. And is in the top gunner of Sport. Nades off the board. Kento has a second pair, of course. But that's a high value target. Oh. I don't think Gavin meant to do that, but that's okay. Opening up the door on drum with the impact tossed out just next to it. Expecting Koi to take up residence inside of Geisha. That's a good shout. Drones are in from Koi, and they'll continue to gain that information. Nobody to play off of it just yet. Finally, Kanto Rikenny gets in the building. It looked like he was droning himself in though. Yeah. Problem is that information expires very quickly. After three, four seconds, the person you just scouted with that drone might as well be in another map at that point. Yeah, car playing kind of isolated. Gavin with the impact tries to get an angle, but nobody's there. So DC are falling back closer toward that bomb site. 
but they still got the active roam. They think someone's on that offensive side of the map, and you'd be right, but they're outside the balcony. Capca trap goes off. Kento almost dying again, trying to do that vertical duty of the sledge, not having the best time upstairs. The nitro cell that we just heard go off. Could yeah. that be it? Would have been Skies as he's going, oh no, no, it was a Capkin trap actually that we keep hearing. <laughs> Never mind, it was a nitro cell. I got lied to. That's fine. Skies C4, yeah, got spent early on. Didn't do any that yellow ping is out. The thing is, there's no angle. He tries to look for it, but Crying finds the kill instead. Good capture by Koi. Crying falters, gets the kill anyway. Deepak drops. DZ have only lost NJR so far. He's a top player on their squad. The rest of the team relatively even, all sitting at three apiece except for Skies. It's an even match across the board, actually. Deepex, the only real player who hasn't been able to show his might. Down goes Kanto Raketi to Skies, so now he will join the rest of his team at three kills. Kryon doesn't see Skies, but Leon does. Gets the pick, the cap can trap as well, and now Leon can walk in, but he doesn't see the other trap. It blows up. But he's not the one credited with the kill. DZ gets it either way as the explosion goes off. The Azami, of, was it Gavin, gets that final pick. And DZ regained the lead with their third round. Capcom traps. Ugh. Remember back when, way back, when they had like a red laser attached to it and they were actually visible, but they would one-shot anybody walking into them? Even then, with a red laser, people would still die to them all the time. Now they're invisible, they only do about half your health, but it's one of those, yeah, you can tank one, but now you gotta go out of your way to look at them on every single door. And that's also why that barbecue kitchen bomb set is so strong, because you're playing above, and you're playing below, and you're playing across. We saw it at the last moments of that previous round, Canadian was still on the east side and office, holding down that area as well. Full map control for DC, the only thing Kari they had, that was a geisha area, and then to drop on down to attach, or attack the bomb site itself. I got my very first ace ever on Skyscraper, actually, on the first day I ever played Rainbow Six. It was on Hostage, really? in fact, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you got an ace the first time you played Siege ever, or the first time you did Skyscraper? So it was the first day I'd ever played it. It was probably my third or fourth map, I would say, okay. of ever playing the game. I was playing Capkin, it was on Skyscraper, somebody grabbed the hostage, <laughs> I got four kills, and I jumped out the window and killed the last player while they had the hostage, and we're trying to get to the extraction zone. So, yep, that will definitely date me. It would have been back in, I think the first day that I ever played Rainbow Six was January 4th, 2017. Oh so we are God. six years past. I mean, to be fair, that was during Red Crow, so I'm actually behind most of the people who play this game, but... I feel like a late adopter because it was right before the first Invitational and right before Velvet Shell completely flipped the game around with Mira coming in. Why January 4th? That's so specific. Why do you remember? Because I looked it up once because it was when I activated my Uplay account. Oh, okay, okay. So it was very easy for me to find it. I was like, I wonder what day it was because my anniversary of playing Rainbow Six. Either way, it's not about me, but I just think it's a nice, it's a little interesting tidbit. So seeing Catkin on Skyscraper is... Uh, it's close to home, yeah? Warms my heart. <laughs> Even though it was a very different map back then, and I would argue... Not as good as it is now. No. I think the map is significantly yeah. better. Yeah, no, the rework was certainly a great addition to the game. Koi would agree, they love playing the map, and what they don't love is Kento almost getting wall banged, thinking he's safe inside a open room, but these soft walls, they can betray you. You love, They say they love this map, but they've only played it once so far through the, during the six Invitational 7-5 victory over W7. It's often banned against them. They don't get to play it. I mean, even Leon said that. Why did you leave Skyscraper unbanned? Exactly. And I mean, DZ beat Secret 8-6, but Secret, a team that is currently on a plane ride home, is not the same as the major champions that are Koi, so. Yeah. I mean, Koi even beat uh, BDS domestically in EOL. They've got great experience on this map and they're showing it so far. Two attacking rounds, looking for a third. And this is that bomb site again that has the distinction of being the most defender favored in the game. DZR 0-2 on defense on it. That's dreadfully bad for a bomb site that you might as well be able to win with your eyes closed. But again, if DZ are not as comfortable on this map and Koi are indeed one of the best teams in the world on Skyscraper, then I guess it stands to reason. So, third crack of this bomb site, 45 seconds left, and Koi have got themselves bogged down over by Drum. 
There's an endless amount of Kiva barriers keeping them at bay, and another will populate in front of their eyes. Canadian gets away, but it's out on Geisha Balcony for Deepak to secure the kill. Spoit with some caliber-based destruction trying to get into Geisha. Leon gets trading a bit of HP. Gavin is now down for the count. DZ have suffered two casualties. They get on the board, though, with Panbazoo taking care of Kryon, and the rest of DZ look to take care of business. The He's final 15 broken. seconds, again, DZ on the ground. Will they get these picks? Panbazoo, kill number two. That's ended by Leon Gids. Point walks in, skies to clutch, but Deepak says no. First half, tied, 3-3. Three, three. Guess what, guess what? Oh, he's gonna say it. <laughs> yeah, same corner actually. That's what it was last time. Oh my god. I just like throw back to Mibi's timeout on theme park and he go, like he made the comment like they're always prone on the floor in the last like 50 seconds of the round. So aim crouch level and go for that flick if you're comfortable with it. And that is really struck true. So many rounds later, it happens time and time again. Three three split. Statistically, you'd expect a 4-2 in favor of the defending team, but a 3-3 for Darkseer, depending on how good they are on their attack versus their defense, might not be the worst case scenario for them. If you can execute the rounds accurately and find openings and get those kills, Darkseer, I mean, they could take it flawlessly if they wanted to. The only downside is Koi. They are so comfortable and experienced in playing Skyscraper in EOL. Everyone bends it against them. Here at the Six Invitationals, most teams have bended against them. Reloading, they can now show if that should be a trend that should continue, or DC perhaps can break it for them. Yeah. Wisely pointed out, it's an, an excellent bit of uh, an addition to this broadcast. Let's take a look at those first bloods and how the round shook out. Koi got Diffuser down in round number one as the teams traded for the first blood. T and Karaoke, the most played bomb site. It's the most played bomb site on Skyscraper, but it was the most played in that first half. It wasn't won by DZ on defense a single time. Despite the fact that it has a 73% of its rounds won by the defenders. Barbecue was played twice. Office was played once. Nice kill by Deepak, and he'll go for the reinforcement. He gets it up in time. Skies is as good as gone, and the Monty that we saw on, on Theme Park that wasn't, I think, as important as it could have been yeah. will now have no impact whatsoever on the very first attack for Dark Zero. And that's actually a very big deal because the Monty is the operator. DC built this entire roster around. There's no Ying, there's no Glass, no execution operators. It was going to be Monty going in, leading the charge, helping get down a plan, get the map control, you know, pressure the bomb set itself. And now it's gone. DC will now have to put this round together in a scrappy way. But okay, what's plan B? The good news is you have Canadian, one of the most, if not the most successful and experienced Iron Joe in the entire game. If anybody could pick this back together, it would be him. Both these teams looking to avoid a lower bracket run. Dark Zero, obviously the team on the ropes, playing on Koi's map. At first half, being a draw, Koi now going to the favorable side on a map that they know and love. That's when you start to sound the alarms for Dark Zero, and I'm sure the fans probably have that in the back of their mind as well. Yeah, I mean, you said the best. They got the Doctor on speed dial. DC, they got to take them all the way to third map now. They're looking for the opening. Backstairs and door entry point for Dark Zero. Looking to strike on that B bomb side. It's been reinforced off. Gonna need NGR to rotate over. Right now, Gavin and NGR, they're working that Geisha side at the same time to take down Deepak, who's going to just sit in tight. He's holding an, an angle of his own. He doesn't have to move from the spot. Contesting from above, Deepak still has all the stim pistols, but unable to use it as there's more than one player from DZ searching for that kill. It's Pan Bazoo to secure. 30 seconds left. DZ need to hurry, but their entire strategy defanged by losing the Monty early on. Confronting those Kiba barriers will be priority number one. Gavin gets a kill, traded back. Koi winning on most of these duels. Cry and drop oh. as Pambazoo does his damnedest, and NJR will stand alone. He's the last one from DZ. Inside a Geisha, underwatch from a bulletproof cam. This is a tough spot for him to be in. Jiggle peeking around the door frame out of Geisha. And they do their best DZ impression as it's Spoit on the ground, playing in the dirt. Koi takes the lead. I didn't get to get on the 
Yeah. Ah, the Monty falling early really is just... Oh, yeah. That is tough. And again, who expects the Geisha wall to be open like that? No one is gonna check for it. It's a very smart play by Koi. That over-aggression really paying off. Pemusu with a very nice flake. Could have been a difference maker in that round, but no. Spark gets that kill again, winning his ones. Koi takes the one-round lead. Has to swap the bomb side, go to office instead. Look at the opener lineup, it's very aggressive from Koi. Every single operator can just fight it out. Alibi, Doc, Ella, Mute, Valkyrie. It's all set and forget the gadgets besides the Doc stims, which is that you want to take active gunfights, then heal yourself or your teammates up. This is a fight for everything lineup from Koi. We've already got results in from the first two upper bracket quarterfinals. Spoilers inbound for about the next 20 to 30 seconds or longer. Mm. We're at the point now where we just simply cannot avoid spoilers because we have to talk about these matches. OXG and Wolves are the first matchup to be confirmed for the main stage, if I Ooh. see correctly here. Okay. They are guaranteed to play on it. Am I correct? No, I'm not. No? You'll play on February 15th, which is, which is Wednesday. The, yeah. Interesting enough. But they are guaranteed because they would be in the lower bracket court. Yes. So that guarantees you go further. Yes. Yeah. Either way, the winner of this matchup will play on the main stage at some point. It might just be a single match, but they still get there either way. The lower bracket is just an unbelievable group of teams yeah. at the moment. You've got G2 down there, you've got Sonics down there, you've got BDS down there, you've got Eminem <laughs> down there. Well, the loser of this matchup plays the winner of G2 phase. Oh, okay. The winner of this matchup plays the winner of M80 W7M. There really isn't a weak opponent in no. that mix. No. Maybe FaZe, if they somehow beat G2, but then play like they've played through most of this tournament, it's possible, because FaZe has been quite inconsistent. Pampazoo's grenade hits Kanto Riketti. Talk about consistency issues. It's something that Kanto struggled with for a lot of EUL. And, well, on this map, he's sitting on a four and six on that close range Ella. Close range to the grenade, that's for sure. Too close indeed. DC got both the single and double wall opened up, so bombs are under pressure now. And this is kind of where Koi's operator lineup, it, it gets, you know, the weakness is shown. They don't have no toxic babes. They have no real gadget they can spend. Just 2C4s. It's all guns blazing for them. They gotta fight it out. In DC, they got the man advantage. It's slow for them again. Absolutely. DC always fighting down the clock. I mean, if you're going up against a team that knows the map inside and out, you need to be especially good and how you want to tackle it. The entire structure of that previous round, as you pointed out, Monty. was based off of the Monty. Yeah. Monty dies. How do you pivot and recover? On a map you're familiar with, probably a little bit easier than a map yeah. that you're not the most familiar with, and more importantly, your opponent knows very, very well. Second kill for Pambazoo picked up as he beheads Leon Kids. Koi gets on the board with a kill from Spoit, who has been utterly phenomenal. 29 kills over these two maps so far for him. t takes out Pambazoo oh. and then flicks on over to NJR. Dark Zero keeps getting themselves into favorable positions, but Koi are able to bail themselves out of trouble time and time again. Gavin and Canadian to work shoulder to shoulder. Spoit a second kill. Crying goes down to Gavin, who looks for more onto Deepak and does it. Suddenly, he's found himself into a 1v1 with Spoit. A position that very few people want to be in. Gavin will have all the confidence in the world, but it's just hubris as Spoit gets his third kill in the round and Koi's lead grows. One thing that we rarely see from Koi is Daypeg playing these flex and aggressive frontline operators. He plays the Echo, he's on drones, he plays far back and bombs with a shotgun typically, but now he is fully unleashed on the dog. And look at that, the one into the second almost gets a third even. Beautiful stuff, and it just gives Koi that extra piece of leverage. It's now five members just fully fighting back instead of four plus the supportive cast. Five rounds for Koi, three for Dark Zero. Things are looking tough. DC, I think they need execution enabling operators because in that previous round, you're walking a breach, you're walking a door, taking just straight up gunfights. There was no Monty. 
NTR on the Thermite had flashbangs instead of smokes, could not cut any of the lines of sight that could have helped him get in. Canadian right now hovering the Ying. I like this change if he sticks it. The Kintelas and the Smokes or a secondary hot breach because this gives you another tool to hit the bomb side. Just like look back on Theme Park. When it's Kanto or Kaden Ying, you toss in one Kandela, take that room, toss in a second, take that room, get a kill here and there, and get something else you can leverage to get in. But the aggression from Koi, another wall that's supposed to be reinforced, is soft, looking for a spawn peak. Kryon's not gonna get it. No. Not gonna get the wall either. Just leaves it. They have five spare reinforcements, by the way. I'll make that four. Late setup. Yeah. Canadian did stick the Ying, by the way, if you can't see the screen. Boy, what a position for Gavin to be in on that previous round. To go from yeah. relative obscurity, competing in the lower levels, the lower tiers of this game, to now in a 1v1 heads-up duel against Spoid, a position that, well, seems to me would be quite miserable. Oh, it's a what? run out from Leon Kids, but what? he's only out for a second. I think he expected them to still be on drone, but both players from DZ were upright guns in hand. Yeah. And Leon Kids gets in the bin. I mean, we spoke about how Solus gives you so much information you can act upon, or your teammates can act upon. Leon Kids might have gotten too excited and baited himself into an unfavorable position, thinking, ah, it's two freebies, I'm gonna go for this one. Very aggressive outside the building, gets shut down. Thing is, as long as Spot's alive, 12 and 3, that's pretty much all Koi needs. These guys have played together now. They got the guns, they got the advantages, they had the Ying operator for late stage execute. It's but a matter of getting to the bomb side safely now. You can leverage time for map control. Might be a good nade. You can see the legs as well, but Spoit gets out of there. Life's still intact for Spoit. So often the win condition of Koi through this matchup. 19 kills in map number one and 12 kills so far here in map number two with time still to go to add to that tally. On Oryx, he'll be hyper mobile. Not just able to get across the ground fast, but can also hop up and maybe retake. This is a kitchen and barbecue take for DZ. Candela's go off, cry and flashed out inside a bar. Pambazoo not too far off of that, but I don't think he sees him. Now Cryon's inside of the bomb site. Pambazoo hunted down. Deepak on back stairs. He gets back to the bomb site. Spoit his first kill of the round on the Canadian. DZ will not be in a favorable position if they cannot win this round. Koi will move to series point. I think and taste it. Only 30 seconds to go. NJR being tempted. Will he win that duel? Softening up Spoy, oh. Kanto Ricchetti comes in for the assist. Gavin to watch Skies, but he falls to Deepak. A second kill for Deepak. As Skies gets the diffuser down, but no! Kanto Ricchetti says that's enough of that. Series point for Koi as they have no problem hopping on and disabling the diffuser. Koi is so close to 2 0 Dark Zero, starting on one of their favorite maps of Theme Park, going on to Koi's own favorite map of Skyscraper. I mean, that's gotta be a timeout, right? Absolutely. It's gotta be DC slamming be. the brakes, talking things through. Things are not working for them. What's going on in that other match over there? They're taking over the tactical timeout. Yeah, it's. One thing I wanna say is I really appreciate the composure of Koi. A lot of these EU teams, when they are winning, they're rowdy. Not the case here. Small, small things. Dial it, dial it up a little more on it, and I think we're fine. I know we're tired, but this, there's literally three rounds left. Bring it to fucking overtime. Get to the next match. Do what we can do. Yes. Yeah, you hear that? Exhaustion was a question you brought up, Parker, because DC's had a very long day. Min says, I know we're tired. We literally have three rounds left. Bring it to overtime. I have bad news for them, though. That means third map. If you're tired now, which is fully, like, fully understandable, you need to just hit the reserves because you got so much more to go. Bank is not going to be a 7 0 for either team unless you just absolutely surrender. It's a long night for Dark Zero. These teams are quite experienced on Bank as well, providing that we get to that third map, which right now doesn't seem likely, but doesn't. things can change. 
DZ's played Bank three times so far at SI 2023, a 3-7 loss to FaZe, a 7-5 victory over M80, and a 6-8 loss to Secret. Whereas on Koi's side of the equation, they are 7-2 over SSG and 7-5 over Elevate as their two score lines. Now, granted, SSG have looked statistically like a worse team than DZ and Elevate aren't here anymore. They were one of the no. APEC teams that got eliminated. So while those score lines are impressive for Koi, they're going to be up against a considerably hungrier and more practiced foe. No way, DPEC goes for this. And that could have been the death knell for Dark Zero if he pulled yeah. it off, but Pampazoo is unfazed. He dispatches DPEC with relative ease, losing very little HP in the process. I bet you Leon Gates made a distinct call saying, guys, if you have an opportunity, go for it. This match point, they're not going to expect the aggression. I'm not going to say Pampasu expected it, but he certainly won the gunfight. Sky stays alive. He's extended on the Monty, not risking anything, because again, this is the same attack we saw last time. If the, uh, he's gonna dr look at the respect he's paying. He's gonna drone out a hard wall, see if the window is prepped before repelling up as a Monty. That's because of how valuable this operator is to the mission at hand that is going to be getting into the bomb site, delivering that diffuser, and getting it down. Leon gets on the Oryx. If you find someone or a Monty, like, look at this. Okay, this is not respect, this is fear. Skies is afraid the moment he rappels in, someone's gonna jump out the window. And it's good to have this kind of fear. Because again, the importance of the operator. He's gonna wait for Siemens to get in first, then they cover him, he gets on in, Pampasu plays flank. It's gonna be a geisha side execute for them. Or not, he's gonna get the wall first. It is going to be a backstairs attack then. Double plugs it with Kiba barriers as well, providing yeah. bigger shelter for Spoit in this position. You've got your best player on Koi this series in, I don't wanna say a rough spot, but for many players, an unwinnable spot with how he's been playing so far in the, what, 25 rounds that we've watched? Yeah. Somebody like Spoit is, well, he makes the unwinnable very easily winnable, Nick. Rotation from Dark Seer to the back stairs. Monty's gonna follow along shortly. This is a stable, super classic Monty execute. You walk up the staircase, open up that balcony door, walk into the bomb site, smokes goes out, you stop planting. Crying is on the bomb site. He's gonna be the one foe that Dark Seer will have to clear before anything can start happening. Coyer foe at 4 0 on this bomb site. DZ need to break that or else it's lights out. Canadian, another pick for DZ. They've got two so far. Pambazoo dropped by Crying. You talked about him. In the midst of the bomb site. Now, very suddenly, it's a 3v3 with Spoit getting in on the action. 14 kills. What a performance it's been for him. Win or lose, he has shown up and nobody can oh. say anything otherwise. Gavin securing a down through the soft wall. There's only 10 seconds left. Sky's taking damage onto, the, onto that Capkin trap, but he's in with the diffuser. It'll be a 2v2. The two players from Koi watching as Skies goes for the plant. Cry and sees an exploit. Tries to make it work. He's next to him. He is in. He gets two big picks. And there's only one left. He'll hop on the diffuser while watching as Cry and falls. Spoit in a 1v1. Gavin, yet again, will have to do battle. Plenty of time, but he needs to find the last player of DZ tucked into the corner. There goes the flash. Another one just wasting time. Spoit just needs a single shot on the Gavin. That's it. He's out. But he's out of there. He needs to get up to the diffuser. Spoit running the marathon mile. Gavin now going in. Can he get beneath the diffuser with the skeleton key? Both teams in a very tense moment. No time left. Spoit needs to stick it, and Gavin should be able to shut this down and oh. will do so. Dark Zero stays alive in a tense okay. moment between these teams. Look at Gavin playing it out. He might be a rookie. He might be new to this level of play, but he played the one versus one with the utmost respect from my side. Stalling for time. Flash springs going out. Jumping out the window. Forcing Spoit to go back upstairs only to then use the gadget, the skeleton key, in the 1v1 with 10 seconds left, guaranteeing the round for Dark Zero. It looked like Skies was gonna save the round. Well, it wasn't. It was Gavin instead. 6-4 now, it's in favor of Koi. 
and they'll go right back to where they just were. But the one key difference is they know that Monty is going to be a problem. They will have that in mind when they go back to this bottom side and play around it. The Valkyrie cameras, verticality, the C4, the Warden for smokes and for flashbangs, they are the measures put into action by Koi to combat skies on the Monty. The Monty might not have literally won the round, but it definitely helped. Again, just walking through that bomb site, applying all that pressure, getting down that diffuser. And DC did discuss for 20 seconds time. And Skies now going to other operators. The floor is being shown, the A is being shown. Despite the success in the previous round, I think DC, they are on very understanding of the fact that Koi won't let that happen twice in a row. They're gonna change it up, double hop reach instead. And Sport, they keep on attending these spawn peaks every single round, not letting Dark CR reach the building quickly. Again, just playing off the fact that DC are slow by default and slowing them down even further. I love 1v1s like that, where it's not just someone walks in, shoots a few bullets, round over. It's decision making instantly by both teams, making it correctly, a dance back and forth. And it's not even two very experienced players, it's Sport and Gavin, some of the rookies from both teams making those smart decisions in the moment. I love watching Good Siege, and that round was definitely one of those. I mean, yeah, Spoit might be a quote-unquote rookie, but he's won a major. He's been around sure now. He's played since he was 12, but... Yeah, at this point, I, I think it's... I don't know if I would call him a rookie still. I get the point you're making. He is an inexperienced player in comparison to the rest of this roster, especially when you've got players like Kanto, Canadian, and Skies, all of whom have, well combined a decade plus, almost two decades of experience between them, whereas Spoit will just have a single year. This game is being taken over by youngsters. It's been taken over by the 18 and 19 year olds who are just so mechanically gifted and have the game sense to back it up. Saw Newers do that in the OXG match earlier. Oh, yeah. You're seeing Spoit do it here. You've seen NJR do it time and time again from DZ. I will say one thing all those teams and players have in common is that there's usually one old person, I say old person, one veteran. Senior citizen. Forward. Senior citizen leading them forward. Koi on match point, a minute to go, and DC, look at them. They're so slow on the clock. They've just entered the first room on the Rome clear with a minute left. Capcom traps, we gotta keep an eye out for them because there's not gonna be time to check every single doorway once they start pushing. Well, good start for DZ yet again, another first blood to go. With the successes that they've been having, four rounds in a row that they've been able to get that first pick, they've only accounted for a single round so far. They're hoping that that becomes two. And DZ, look at this confidence. They've taken everybody but Deepak out from Koi. It was a sluggish start to the round, but they find their footing and then they hit that ground running. Oh. Gavin, he was responsible for the final kill in the previous round. He does it again. Work these rounds, boys. Work these fucking rounds. During the timeout, Troy said, all we have to yeah. do we is, and it seems yeah, that they're doing it. Like a... They've now pushed Koi to the breaking point. It forces me, P, to call a timeout and we'll listen. Right, boys, you took the words right out of my mouth, okay? Yep. Stop giving up these areas so quickly and so soon. Okay. They're doing absolutely everything they can to avoid any gunfights with you people, okay? Yep. Alright? They're trying to lurk around, trying to get some drones on you. Like, they have drones on you on site, okay? So we keep that in mind. The okay. drones are placed very late. Alright? So if there's nothing happening and you don't feel pressured, look for those drones, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Respect your Michael calls. Don't give up to uh, don't give up areas too soon. Okay? Yeah, they're yep. doing nothing. Like, we can just sit there and exactly, waste time. Yeah. Yep. First so 60 seconds, where they fuck up. First 60 seconds, get those picks. Waste some That's time, it. then come back. Let's right. go, boys! Where do we go? We can go to the uh, same again, or not? Do you guys want to go the same again? Yeah, you can. You oh, lost it twice. Third in a row. So, Kate being called out as one change of operator. Crying, of course, going to the Goyo, speaking to that time running down time and time again. And yeah, maybe recognizing that A, Dark Seal, they're very slow, so we can hold for ground for longer, burn more time, and B, the late drone setup from Dark Zero being very much respected. It's a problem for Koi. They're falling on the bombs because those yellow pings are coming out, but also, I'll give credit to Dark Zero, they had so much confidence in that round. That was the most aggressive, straightforward, simplified round we've seen from them, I think, both between this map of Skyscraper and that of the last theme park. 
it was just good old shoot up. Walk on in, take your fights, Gavin Pappas would do your thing, go kill. They're sitting on 11 Ten kills apiece. The other three members in six. NGR, Canadian Disguise, that is. Of course, and Koi, it's still the spoiled show. 16 up top, second follow up is gonna be Deepak and Leon gets an 8 each. Kento on 6, Crying on 4. The Kayak is gonna stop the Geisha Breach for a little bit. But Canadian, he reads it. On the Thatcher, those EMPs will make quick work of any Kai Claw placed anywhere on the map, as the EMP radius is bigger than that of the Claw itself. Heartbreak for Dark Zero fans could come in the form of Koi winning this round. And I say that just because misery seems to follow this team for whatever particular reason, Nick. But the last two rounds have given you a lot of confidence. And I'm hoping for overtime yet again. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's getting late in the night. It's all 10 o'clock. We still have an entire map to go. DZ need to win three rounds to secure yet another map. And it'll be bank. Again, a map that's been played by both teams. Three times by DZ, twice by Koi so far. Mm. Also, speaking about the mental state of Dark Zero and how tired they are, that was pointed out by mid earlier. Both Skyscraper, Theme Park, and Bank well, I said both. All three of those maps, <laughs> they're very taxing on, I'm gonna say, like, your brain power, right? You gotta problem solve and think about so many small things every single time. It's not linear, simplified maps like, let's say, Clubhouse can be, Oregon can border. be. Border. Yeah, border. So, honestly, for Dark Zero side, these are very difficult maps to play as your second best of three in the day, and you might like them as a team, but due to the circumstance of having to play earlier and going the distance there, that can definitely be the difference we make between how much energy on the last map you have. This is really going to muck with the stats, Nick, that T and Karaoke, with its oh, yeah. all of its pick rates, sitting at a 73% of all rounds won by the defense. Yeah. It's been played five times. This is the sixth time we are seeing this bomb site, and it's been won by the defense once. That is actually a crazy stat to look at. Numbers lie sometimes. Numbers don't lie. They just get misused by the people mm. who try to fit them into whatever reference that they do. I mean, for us, you can look at it and see that this has been a coin flip map. Yeah. First half was 3-3, three, three, and if DZ can muster up the same energy that they did on those last two rounds, it'll be a 3-3 three, three second half as well. Selma's going off to open up the back wall of karaoke. Yeah, it's a late execute though. Dark Zero with 30 seconds left, and they lose the opening pick. That's huge. Koi needed that so desperately. They get another spoit kill number 17. He's really been leading by example. Leon Gids and Deepak are both down. Do DZ know this? Down goes NJR. Leon Gids secured. Can Deepak get back up? Sky's inside of the bomb site. There's a lot of eyes on him. He blows up that canister. Crying falls. Leon Gids low on HP. Deepak still bleeding out. Ooh. Skies goes down. Pambazoo needs to clutch. But Kanto's EDD kills him. Koi survive a scare and the timeout works. We'll see Koi on the main stage in Plas Bell. They face the winner of M80W7M in the upper bracket quarterfinal. I mean, Koi, they were rogue back in Berlin. They won the major. Things were looking slow. They were not making international events. They're not doing great domestically. They make it to invite after six months by winning that Berlin major. And now, once again, are guaranteed to play in front of a crowd for at least one map. I was wrong. It's not the quarterfinals. It's the semifinals. Yeah. That's a deep run for Koi. We're not going to spoil the results for you. So we're not going to tell you who won the M80W7 matchup. We don't even know if it's still ongoing. Spicy. But right now, 